Right now, I am at Saracena Hoodie, and this is an establishment that's been run by the same family for over 230 years. And Yoshisa oh. is explaining to us about the different types of soba. Apparently, there's a lot of different types of soba. I've never seen this before. This is a white soba. This is made with buckwheat core, and that's what makes it look white. And these were the soba that were presented to the imperial family back in the day. Only, only the upper class were able to afford this soba. And Yoshisa's family, his family's been making soba for over 230 years. And watch him slurp. Watch the slurp right there. So you don't dip it all into the dipping sauce, which was a big mistake I used to do all the time. Just the bottom half. The texture is amazing. And this is also part of Edomai cuisine, traditional food that's been created in the Tokyo region. And this is how they would slurp because it would be considered the elegant way of slurping and you have to slurp. <laughs> Mm. The dipping sauce, a little sweet, a lot of beautiful umami flavor, but it doesn't at all hide the sweetness of the noodles themselves. This is absolutely astonishingly good. Mm. The mouthfeel of this, the soba is incredible. It's so smooth. Again, I would never think this is soba just by looking at it or even tasting it. I can eat like 40 of these. It tastes like Almost fancy. I can see why this will be reserved for the upper class back in the day. Arigatou gozaimasu. Second box of soba has a right. Oh, it's green. So this is chrysanthemum soba. Look at it. You can see the little specks of green in the noodles. Just as smooth as the last one and glistening. It's so pretty. Dip the bottom half into the dipping sauce. Mmm. The texture is springier than the last one we had. And it has this like beautiful, subtle floral aftertaste. And just like the last soba, it has that subtle sweetness. This might be the best texture of any soba I've ever had. Chewing on some of the strands of soba without the dipping sauce. Mm. It's so sweet. It's like you're slurping the world's best soba while walking through a chrysanthemum garden. Soba is one of my favorite things in the world. So this one is the hikikurumi. It's the uh, he's using the outer parts of the buckwheat 80-20 buckwheat to flour ratio. I just want to try the soba noodle on its own without any dipping sauce here. Mm. It's of a less bouncier texture than the last two. More firm yet chewy. This tastes more like a like an al dente pasta almost in terms of texture. And the dipping sauce, Yoshi-san said, you can mix in the daikon, the scallions. Mm. It's just a different kind of delicious. This type of noodle is closer to the soba that I eat a lot of. It's really good. This is the fourth type of soba and it is really, really thick. It looks like it's about double the size of the last soba noodle we had. Mm. This is a very firm, very chewy, thick strands of soba noodles. This one I feel like you taste the buckwheat the most. It has got a nice chew. The texture is very, very good. I like it. I like thick noodles. That's spectacular. Yoshi-san recommended to uh, get a try a hot soba. He recommended this one with a giant hakakuri clam inside. Now you could choose any one of the four sobas that we just had. Oh, that broth is delicious. You taste that amazing seafood flavor from the dashi. Mm, the light sweetness from the soba is still ever present sitting in this broth. A little bit of greens in here. And when you're eating noodles in Japan, you gotta slurp. Mm, that is a sweet, sweet clam. Mm, fish. It's slurptacular. This is really interesting. So they use the water that used to cook the soba and it's called soba yu, which is soba hot water, which has all the nutrients of the soba boiled into the water. And the water is poured into your sauce dipping cup, which is full of dashi and all that great dipping sauce flavor. And then you just drink it. Ooh. Is that delightful dashi, the soy sauce. There's so much flavor in this. This is good for me. I drink this all the time. Mmm, that's pure liquid flavor right there.
have a little time between soba and dinner. Since it is my last day, pop into the local McDonald's and see what's new. First thing, white grape soda. Sweet and pretty tart. Good. So a couple new things I never had before on the menu. One is a McDonald's that now has churros. And then a double beef soy sauce burger. And this is really cool. Like burnt garlic sauce. So this is one of the greatest sauces McDonald's has ever came up with. This thing has tons of garlic. As soon as I open the sauce up, I smell the garlic right away. It's a little sweet. It's also a little sour. This is a 10 out of 10 sauce McDonald's just came up with here. Yeah, you know that citron sauce? I ain't got nothing on this. The double beef soy sauce burger is beautiful. A couple of beef patties, cheese in between. Mm. This is some masterful work McDonald's did on this burger. There's a peppery soy sauce glaze on both the top and bottom buns. The patties are tender, they're scrumptious, they're juicy. Might need to sink to those patties so easily. Mm. You can tell right away this is a juicy patty. A little bit of onions for some crunch. The sauce is a bit sweet, a bit smoky. It's a really cheesy burger. It's such a great beef patty. That thing is absolutely spectacular. So the churro, mm, pretty toasty on the outside. Oh, it looks like Nutella in the middle. It tastes like Nutella in the middle. I think the filling is good. It's very chocolatey, it's very smooth. This thing tastes like it was microwaved. It's pretty stale on the outside. Inside is very, very doughy. Every time I'm back in Japan, I always gotta check out the new items at McDonald's. Fantastic burger, even better sauce. Not so great, Charles. All right, I'm gonna finish up, take a little break. Dinner's gonna be really fun. I'm here at Capo Toyota, and tonight's gonna be a Kaiseki meal featuring both the land and the sea and everything in between. And there's two chefs working in conjunction to bring this feast. One is Toyota san, and Takarai san is doing the sushi, so this is such a treat. And right now, Chef is slicing apart a giant chunk of tuna. I think it's the biggest one I've ever seen in a restaurant. It's 20 kilograms, so about 50 pounds of tuna. You can see all that great marbling. Oh, that's so beautiful. Fingers crossed that entire tuna is being served tonight. The appetizer is always going to be very seasonal, very fresh. And this is also Ido My Cuisine. So it's utilizing a lot of ingredients from the Tokyo area. Since the cherry blossoms are already blooming in February, here it is. Dish number one is fugu meat and fugu skin with some nori. Wow, as soon as I put this in my mouth, you get that beautiful aroma of the nori with that delicate fugu meat. Oro, a local mountain vegetable that I've been eating throughout the week. Mm. Third dish, arc shell. Mm. Mm. First of all, the cucumber is beautifully sliced. Arc shell is sweet, a little snappy, with a little bit of a sweet miso sauce on top. That's so good. Next dish is bamboo clams seaweed in a gentle broth of dashi. The bamboo is delicate and crunchy. Wonderful mild flavor with a, just a tiny hint of earthiness and nuttiness. The broth is so good. Light broth infused with the flavor of the bamboo and the seaweed and a bit of sweetness from the clam. Mm. A hint of yuzu or hint of citrus in this as well. Oh, that's incredible. Sushi courses. Mm. Squid, firm but tender. Slight sweetness, little hint of brininess. That thing tastes as beautiful as it looks. Mm. 
Second piece, spinach mackerel with a little dab of salt and some citrus. Oh, that's butter, pure. Melts in your mouth, butter. The citrus really balances out the fattiness of the mackerel. Chase it with a piece of ginger. It's spicy and vinegary, much more intense than uh, other gingers I had before. Next dish is fugu leftovers. So these are parts of fugu that's typically not used, including the mouth. This looks like a fugu collar. Mm, I think it's delicious. It's braised in, um, with, I think, some soy sauce. The meat is firm, very flaky, extremely mild and clean as well. I'm so excited for the collar. This thing is so fatty and nice. I think the collar is a very underrated piece of the fish. This is the fugu head. Here I see some of the skin. This is the, the mouth area right here. Wow, this is nice and gelatinousy. Look at that. See all that beautiful collagen right under the skin. Mm. This tastes almost a bit like pig trotter. Ton of collagen, very, very nice. Next, switching back to sushi, seared surf clams. Mm. Sweet, really, really tender. Oh my gosh, that's so good. That's definitely different than the surf clams that I've had back in the US. You know that the red triangle thing? This ain't nothing like that. Way more delicate, way more flavorful. This looks so beautiful. Mm, that's outrageous. It's a giant prawn, freshly boiled. And then inside, they ground up yibi, which is shrimp, and stuffed it on the inside of this prawn. So this thing is just all sorts of extra sweet. This is really interesting. This is tofu without the soy. So it's something that the monks used to eat and make a lot. So it really just has milk and sesame, sitting on some sweet sesame sauce. That's so creamy. It's like a creamy sesame pudding almost. The sesame flavor is really intense. That's a very good thing. Mm. Next is a specialty fish, gizzard shad, one that is uh, very prominent in Edomai cuisine. And in Japanese, it's known as kohara, and it has very distinct flavors. And the preparation of this fish, and it's quite complex. So the fish needs to be deboned, it needs to be filleted, marinated in vinegar and salts to cure it. And the process really tenderizes the fish. It's a little salty, a little tangy, and it's so beautiful with its glistening silver skin. Next course, hand roll stuffed with uni and a little bit of salt drizzled on top. Mm. Oh gosh, so sweet and creamy with that beautiful smoky roasted flavor of the nori and the creamy richness of the uni it's just balanced out so well by the sushi rice. Hand roll is one of my favorite things in the world. This is amazing. Every single dish is so pretty. Open this up, it has a subtle smoky flavor. Unagi, there's Japanese yam with some yuzu sitting on some greens. Mm. Smoky, hint of sweetness. The yam is delicious, very soft and creamy with a burst of citrus flavor from the yuzu. That yuzu is so good with the yam. Mm. Amazing.
is a giant piece of tuna. <laughs> that's the leanest part, and that is just pure butter. A little salt, a little citrus, and that's of course from the giant piece of tuna. It's so beautiful, which they expertly cut up right in front of us. The way that broke down in my mouth is something that you don't really usually expect lean tuna to do. I'm still reliving that bite in my mind right now. This is the otoro that they quickly blanched in water and then packed away to let it just stand and cure for a little bit. Never had it like this before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's crazy good. That is a rich buttery melt in your mouth. Slice of tuna. I feel like that piece, you get more of the barbling flavor. Man, that's crazy. It's one of those bites that it's hard to describe. Yeah, it's it's fatty, it's melting in your mouth, but it's really hard to describe. It's more of a sensation you feel when that thing is just dissolving on your tongue, like almost like the food euphoria, if you will. That was an experience. Next course, tempura. Looks like some shrimp, mountain vegetable, and white fish. So this compared to the tempura I had last night, they can definitely taste the egg wash. The one I had yesterday was a lot lighter. But that's not saying this is heavy. This is super light as well. It's just a preference. The batter is ridiculously light. The white fish is stuffed with tamago. Huh. Tamago brings up another layer of creamy richness. This is almost like a like a delicate white fish egg sandwich. Mm. Next piece, anago, and this thing is, is pretty intense. First of all, let me let me eat it. Oh. Very, very soft, but the story is the sauce that's on top of the anago. So this sauce is made with sugar, soy sauce, and anago gelatin. The original sauce in the original container was made over a hundred years ago. And what they do is they keep adding to this container of sauce. They were saying um, during World War II, when they were escaping from their house, they grabbed the container of sauce. So that sauce has lived through two world wars. I mean, that's a taste of history right there. And history tastes delicious. So this is really interesting. A roll with squash. The squash is pickled, a little sweet, and very vinegary. And that's served with a tamago, with nori, rice, and sesame inside. Wow, that's a very different tamago than I ever had. Very nice. And finally, dessert, fresh strawberry. One more dessert. This is a uh, shira tamako, which are small, white, chewy balls. They're pretty much like mochi, but they're made from shira tamako flour, which makes them much smoother. And they're soaked in warm red bean sauce. Wow. Yeah, this is absolutely amazing. I don't think I've actually had this before. Beautiful way to close out. Well, it's been not only just been an amazing kaiseki meal, but also this whole experience learning about Edomai cuisine, different Japanese food items like wasabi, fish cake. I feel like this trip has not only been just amazingly delicious, but so educational, so fun. I love learning about food. I love learning about the history behind food. I always said the best way to get to know a different culture is really just by taking a bite out of it. And this has just been an incredible experience for me. Being able to eat at all these establishments that has been around for over a hundred years, but in some cases hundreds of years. And as always, all the places I went to, list down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.